There was still a chill in the air. The morning sun was hidden behind dark green clouds. A lone man made his way down a quiet country path. Gravel crunched under his heavy walking boots. He heard rain as it began to fall and make its way down through the trees. Suddenly there was the sound of twigs breaking as something ran up behind him. A grubby looking ball rolled in front of him. It took you long enough. Bent down to pick the ball up. He turned and looked at the large golden Labrador that eagerly stared back at him. I don't want to get caught in this rain, okay? So, last one, yeah? The man launched the ball down the path and watched as the dog raced after it. The man watched as the dog stood over the ball and paused. Hey, today would be nice. Without taking the ball, the dog took off down another path. Ah, damn it. Best not be chasing that cat again. The man grumbled under his breath as he broke into a slow jog. Once he had retrieved the ball, he looked around. His dog was nowhere to be seen. At the end of the path was a large farmhouse, set far back from the country lane. He could hear soft, low-pitched whining. Shadow, where are you at, boy? After going silent for several seconds, an unsettling sobbing noise emanated from the tree line. I told you to leave that damn cat alone. The man searched the tree line as he made his way down the path towards the farmhouse. A cell phone lay at the edge of the path. He knelt down to inspect it. He noticed it was sat in a pool of blood. The screen had been cracked. He thought he heard something whisper, help me, before the sobbing continued. The hell is this? He dropped the phone and frantically tried to wipe the blood off. A slight movement in the ditch caught his attention. A small, pale girl reached her hand towards him and shrieked. The man stumbled as he stared back at the girl, unable to take his eyes off her. She was covered in blood and her matted hair covered most of her face. She was shaking violently as she stared right back at the man. The whites of her eyes pierced through her messy hair. With her breath visible in the cold morning air, she let out another wailing shriek. Several hours earlier, a porch light flickered on, illuminating the driveway as a car pulled up alongside the farmhouse. A young woman, Carmen, stepped out of the vehicle into the cool summer night. Crickets chirped from the dark forest that surrounded the house. The wooden steps creaked as she made her way to the door. She paused and looked through the nearby window. The house was in darkness. Carmen pressed the doorbell as she continued to look through the window. She flinched at how loud the ringing was. She pulled out her cell phone and scrolled to contacts. Amy. Carmen paced beside the door as she made the call. It rang several times before Carmen realized she could hear a phone vibrating. She peered back through the window and saw Amy's phone light up a section of the living room. Carmen let out a sigh, muttering under her breath. What's going on, Ames? She knocked on the door. Amy, better be a good reason you're ghosting me. No reply came, and Carmen decided to let herself in. Moonlight poured into the kitchen window, flickering through the swaying trees. Ames, where are you at? A breeze sent a chill over Carmen and she rubbed her arms. The door slammed shut in the draft, blocking the light from the porch. Startled, Carmen flinched and inhaled sharply. Alexa, lights on. Slowly, the large open plan room was lit up, except for the kitchen area that remained illuminated by the moonlight. Carmen walked over to the cell phone and picked it up. Wiping the dust from the screen, she noticed a lot of messages and missed calls, all from the same number. A preview of a message caught Carmen's attention. It read, The Momo Challenge. The floorboards above her head creaked as something moved above her. Turning her gaze upwards, she noticed a light came on above the stairwell. Just so you know, Ames, if you jump out at me, I'm not gonna be sorry when I hit you. 
Carmen rolled her eyes as she made her way towards the stairs. As she reached the bottom of the stairs, she paused. Behind her, a shadowy reflection moved across the widescreen TV. A tall, thin figure walked past the kitchen window. It walked up to the edge of the shadowy kitchen and stared right at Carmen. It remained motionless. Even with its back hunched, it loomed over the girl. Long, dark hair flowed down the figure's pale body. Two large eyes peered out of the darkness, unblinking and focused. Carmen turned her head sharply at a noise from the kitchen, but nothing appeared to be moving. The soft moonlight flickered across the top of the dining table. As she turned back to make her way up the stairs, another clattering sound echoed from the kitchen and something ran out from under the table. Carmen grabbed the railing as it darted past her. Jesus, cat! She let out a soft laugh. No need. A tree branch rattled against the window above the stairwell. As she went up the stairs, she paused on the landing and saw the cat stood at top of the stairs. The moonlight reflected in its eyes. Think you're funny, don't you? As she reached out her hand to pet the cat, it hissed at her and ran away. The tall, pale figure watched from the dark corner of the landing as Carmen looked around. The figure tilted its head to a neck-breaking degree as Carmen looked right through it. Once she was upstairs, the lights below suddenly went off. Carmen ignored it and walked along the corridor towards Amy's room. Finding the door slightly open, she gently knocked on the door with the back of her hand. Looking through the gap, the room was in darkness. Amy, behind her, the long dark hair of the pale figure dangled from the ceiling above Carmen. The pale figure opened its wide mouth and a snake-like tongue emerged, slithering towards Carmen. As she slowly entered the room, the door was ripped out of her grasp and she was pulled into the darkness. The door slammed behind her. The sound of metal grinding reverberated through the room as the deadbolt clicked into place. What the hell, Amy? Carmen put a light on and turned to face her friend. Carmen? Carmen's annoyed appearance quickly turned into one of concern. Damn, what is going on with you? Amy was shaking with dark circles around her tearful eyes. As she t looked over her friend, Carmen grabbed her arm. Are you cutting again? Seriously? Amy pulled her arm away and clasped the wound. You shouldn't have come. Why? Why are you here? Amy walked towards the window, muttering incoherently and frantically searching for something outside. You sent me a message to come over, said something was wrong. Carmen watched as Amy froze, and now that I am here, I would say that is an understatement. Amy held her head in one hand and began to shake her head. No, no, I didn't. I refused. As Carmen looked around the room, she realized the extent of the mess. It was in a disheveled state. It looked like someone had ransacked the place searching for something. Carmen put her hand on Amy's trembling shoulder. Amy, you need to tell me what is going on right now. Amy sat quietly for several seconds, searching for a response. Did you see her? With a puzzled look on her face, Carmen shook her head. Who? Amy pulled away from her friend and began to search her desk. My phone, I need it. Where is it? Carmen took the phone out of her pocket and handed it to Amy. He left it downstairs as Amy searched for something on her phone. Carmen noticed loose pages scattered across the dresser and table. A drawing of a faceless woman caught Carmen's attention. As she picked it up, it revealed a notebook underneath. An oval face with two large eyes is drawn on the cover, with the name Momo literally carved into the cover hundreds of times. Carmen looked over at Amy as she paced about fixated on her phone. On the first page, the unknown number was written in an elongated stylistic font with the title, The Momo Challenge. Before Carmen could say anything, Amy pulled out her shoulder. Here, look. 
She held the phone out to show Carmen the security camera feeds scrolling through the multiple feeds. What am I supposed to be seeing here? Amy completely ignored the question. Carmen looked back at the papers scattered on the desk and then at her friend. Focused on her phone, Amy is unaware of her friend's worried gaze. Once Amy got the camera feed outside of her bedroom, she gasped and began to shake. The tall, pale figure was right outside the door with her face pressed up against the door. She's here. Carmen takes the phone and looks at the same feed. There was nothing there. The hallway was empty. Amy's eyes opened wide as she looked at the screen. The pale figure rolled its head back to look directly at the camera. She smiled widely and her jaw swung open. Its mouth opened to a jaw-breaking degree and its snake-like tongue slithered down the closed door. Amy spun to face the door. Watching the tongue slither up the door, she began to cry and shake violently. Her legs went numb and she collapsed to her knees. Carmen held her friend. Desperately, she tried to calm her down. The tongue slithered up to the deadbolt and hesitated. Then it flicked the light switch off. Amy was now sobbing uncontrollably. Just a bad bulb. I'm not going to let anything happen to you, I promise. Carmen tried to reassure her friend. The sound of the deadbolt sliding open made both girls freeze. The room was silent as both girls watched the door slowly creep open. Nothing was there. Carmen stood up to go and turn the lights back on. Amy's phone started to ring, making Carmen jump. She recognized the number, the one from the book, the same one Amy had multiple unread messages from. Without hesitation, she answered the call. What do you want? Carmen blasted angrily. All she could hear on the other end was raspy breathing. Behind the girl's pale bony fingers curled out of the large dresser table mirror. They held on to the frame. The pale face appeared with dark circles where the eyes should be. The figure pulled itself through the mirror, its limbs contorting to impossible angles. It towered over Amy and stared down at her. Carmen flicked the light switch on and looked out into the hallway. Nothing was there. Who else is? Carmen turned back towards her friend. She dropped the phone to the ground and the screen cracked. Her gaze focused on the tall figure looming over her friend. Its pale skin glistened in the moonlight. The flowing dark hair reached to the ground and pooled around Amy. It raised its freakishly long arm and Amy stood up, completely focused on Carmen. Amy, you need to come over here. The fear was evident in her voice. The figure lifted its head to face Carmen, its round black eyes shimmering in the light. I am sorry, Carmen. I have no choice. Amy's eyes turned black as she moved swiftly towards Carmen. As Amy lunged at Carmen, the figure's thin, lipless mouth turned into a smile. The next morning... The man slid into the ditch beside the injured girl. She tried to say something as he helped her sit up. Her body was covered in horrific injuries. The man wrapped his jacket around her. His dog hid in the tree line and barked hysterically. The girl began to cry uncontrollably as she looked back to the path. Stood on the path, Amy and the pale figure stared down at her. Her friend was almost unrecognizable. Her dark eyes stood out against her pale skin. Her blood-soaked hair draped over her face. Amy held the broken phone in her hand. The Momo challenge text was as skewered as blood ran over the screen. Perfectly still, they both smiled down at Carmen. Hey guys, thanks for listening to today's Creepypasta, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, and share for more. Hit the bell notification and select all to get all notifications for whenever I upload. I upload six days a week. Monday till Saturday. 
Also, the links to the Facebook page, the Twitter, and the Instagram are in the description below. So make sure you go follow all of those because I share the videos on all of those. Also, the links to the source for today's creepy pasta and the music used will be in the description below. So go check those out. Also in the description below is my uh, email address. So if you want to send me a creepy pasta to narrate, send it on my email address or on any of the social medias in the description. So uh, yeah. Until next time in the Deadly Zone, stay deadly and stay spooky.